Released in May of 2022, Astral Radiance is the 10th Pokemon TCG Sword and Shield main set. It is the set that brought in the world of Pokemon Legends Arceus to the trading card game with a lot of Hisui Pokemon, and it also introduced Radiant Pokemon into the mix as well. And on top of that, there are some really impactful cards that shaped the meta in the year of 2022. I'm Jet from InThirdPerson.com. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let's talk about the most noteworthy cards in Astral Radiance. We have to start this list with Origin Form Palkia V-Star, one of the most dominant forces in the competitive scene in 2022. And this card was basically a better Suicune V with its move subspace swell for only two water energy does 20 damage or does 60 damage suikun does 20 60 damage plus 20 more damage for each pokemon on the bench yours and your opponents this could hit for up to 260 damage if both benches were full and it was incredibly powerful there were just so many decks where you want to set up wide and palkia was just getting one shots like crazy you could amplify that with choice belt hit for 290 throw in a leon in there and then you're doing north of 300 and its power level was nuts power level and efficiency on top of that you're playing this with shady dealings so you could cherry pick whatever cards you needed and on top of that it's V-Star Power, Star Portal allowed you to accelerate three energy from the discard pile onto any water Pokemon you wanted. You could pull, you could set up your Pal a second Palkia V-Star out of nowhere. You could also set up a Shady Dealings Inteleon. You could set up uh, another secondary attacker. And it gave you so many tactical options that it felt like Palkia could do just about anything. And while Palkia was an incredibly strong deck and was the the center of the meta for a very long time, it actually really struggled in competitive play. And not to say that it wasn't a top placing deck, it was always near the top. It got gate kept by a very specific deck after its first tournament win. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. The right hand Pokemon of Origin Form Palkia and many other decks Radiant Greninja was one of the first Radiant Pokemon. It might have been the first Radiant Pokemon that we saw. And this is a this is a ridiculously good card. Its ability concealed cards is allows you to discard a water energy, actually discard any energy and then draw two cards. We've seen this ability of sorts with the Chinchino, with uh, Zorark GX, with Trade, where you discard one, draw two. And because this is energy specifically, technically it's a little more limiting, but there are so many decks that want discard synergy with the energy in particular, so you can reattach it later or what have you. And this was an amazing card for draw power. But on top of that, it has the move Moonlight Shuriken for two water and one colorless energy. Uh, you discard two energy from Radiant Greninja and you do 90 damage to two of your opponent's Pokemon. This is an amazing snipe attack for taking out two targets on the bench or one in the active, one on the bench. And actually getting that, covering that attack cost was not that bad, whether you were playing um, Palkia V-Star and you're just using its uh, V-Star power or you're Raihanning to the Radiant Greninja or you're playing a Lost Box deck and you're using Mirage Gates to cover the cost. There were a lot of decks that actually used Radiant Greninja as an attacker as well. Absolutely phenomenal card. One of the biggest decks to come out of Astral Radiance was the Reggie Gigas deck. Now, there, there's a whole line of Reggie cards. I'm not going to show all of them here. We're just going to use the Reggie Gigas to talk about what made this deck so special. Uh, the whole gimmick of the deck is that you needed to get one of every Reggie on the board. You needed the Reggie Gigas, the Reggie Rock, Reggie Ice, Reggie Steel. Reggie Drago, Reggie Lecky, all on the board at once. And once you did that, you could use Reggie Gigas's Ancient Wisdom to accelerate 
any type of energy from the discard into a poke a regigigas of your choice or a reggie of your choice and because of the way the deck worked you were able to get like hit a whole bunch of stuff in the meta for weakness or turn off pokemon v's attacks on the next turn or or do bench damage hit for v maxes for 300 plus damage they, they let you do so much stuff now getting all six reggies on the board is a challenge in and of itself and in certain ways the reggie gigas deck was its own worst enemy but the reggie gigas deck was a dominant force in competitive play for a very long time now post rotation i'm not really sure where reggie's going to go losing a lot of special energy is going to hurt the deck really bad as a scoop up net but regardless it had an amazing run in the 2022 season right up until rotation origin form dialga v star is not as strong as palkia v star however its star chronos attack v star power is absolutely nuts for four metal energy and a colorless you do 220 damage and you get to take another turn being able to take two turns in a row can be absolutely devastating and players found ways of covering that insane attack cost whether you were using celebrations mew whether you were playing a lost box deck there were, or you were playing the magna zone that came in this set uh, there are definitely ways of covering that incredibly high attack cost and is it is it worth it um uh, maybe maybe not i think most recently dialga v star with mew actually got top 32 at the san diego regionals and this was at a point where dialga has largely fallen off of the competitive landscape but this deck has, I mean, Dialga V-Star has had, it's a ton of fun to play and it does have upside. It's really hard to ignore a card that lets you take two turns in a row. And maybe it's not the most meta relevant card right this second, but it is a ton of fun to play. And I don't think we've seen the last of it. Starmie V is a interesting tech in water decks for two water energy you get energy spiral which does 50 damage for each energy attached to all of your opponent's pokemon if you imagine say arceus v star and arceus gets its three energy on and then it charges another three energy onto like a duraludon or something starmie could come in for two water energy and just one shot the arceus no problem and starmie did kind of fall out of favor unfortunately because it only has 190 hp with the way that the meta was going at the time this was going to get one shotted every single time but you could up trade here in very specific situations what made it which made it an interesting tech in a number of water decks hasuyan decidui v and v star let's talk about these together because at the time of its release this was considered not very good However, Hisuian Decidui V-Star ended up being in the deck that won the World Championships in 2022. Andre Skubal playing his ADP deck with Arceus V-Star, Flying Pikachu, and Hisuian Decidui. And now this was even, at the time it was, it made sense why Decidui was in that deck, but I don't think it was a particularly strong card. It was just the right card at the right time and we'll talk about it here a little bit the decidui v it has the move close quarter shooting which does 100 damage it's 100 shred and this could help you get through mill tanks yes you were 10 damage short uh you could use something like a zigzagoon or something else to close the gap on the damage and then you could also use the Sijuai V Star for Somersault Feathers doing 160 damage and you can discard up to three energy cards from your hand to do up to 250 damage. 250 damage is not bad. Having to discard energy for it's not great. The big deal with the Hisuian Decidui V Star is that you could put this on the board and one shot an Arceus, which was very um, popular at the time. Yeah, there were Arceus in particular being able to one shot normal types was uh, noteworthy and the Sijuai V-Star ended up helping Andre Skubal win the world championships and it's kind of funny because like 
I have seen as soon as like no one was playing this card on PTCGO and then Andre won the championship and then people started playing this in their decks and it still didn't <laughs> and shortly after they were taking Decidueye back out because just the meta at that very specific time at the world championships was such that Decidueye V-Star made sense but against the the broader world it it just wasn't good enough but um shout outs to Andre Scoopball for the the right meta call on that one Darkrai V-Star looks like it has a lot of potential with Dark Pulse, does 30 damage plus 30 more damage for each Dark Energy attached to all of your Pokemon. There are a bunch of Dark Pokemon that accelerate themselves, such as Galarian Moltres, or yeah, Galarian Moltres V, uh, Baby Galarian Moltres. There's Dark Patch in the set that helps you accelerate even faster, and Star Abyss can be used to, to get two Dark Patches back from the discard pile to accelerate even faster. It, uh, this deck was just like a little too clunky and a little too slow. There are times where turn one going second, the Moltres can one-shot anything in the active, and then after that, you're kind of hitting for 300 plus damage. Uh, people have experimented with putting a ho -O v in the deck to accelerate energy on turn one. Uh, but Dark Ride V-Star just kind of was a little too clunky. And even in a world where Mew V-Max is popular, Dark Ride V-Star just wasn't enough to, to cut it. That being said, Dark Rye V Star, it's it has potential. I have definitely lost to people playing this deck, and it is one that I still want to cover on the channel at some point. A personal favorite of mine, Hasuian Samurott V Star, never really saw the light of day. It got some placements, like it it got played here and there in online tournaments, and it never really took off in, in competitive play, but I think it's really good for two dark energy, does 110 damage, plus if your opponent's active Pokemon already has damage counters on it, um, you do another 110 damage for 220, and it's got at least one dam. you're doing like at least 230, right? Um, a lot of people tried playing this with Shady Dealings, which I personally hate. I personally much preferred playing it with the Biberal engine and just a bunch of Zigzagoons to get that initial damage on there. And then you could even use Mooncleave Star for during your turn, just put four damage counters on any of your opponent's Pokemon. And it was, you combine the Merciless Blade, put damage counters on it, use Moon Cleave Star, throw a Choice Belt on there, and you're hitting for like north of almost 300 damage if I'm doing the math right. And it's a deck that I still love to play. Now, at this point, you can kind of, it's seeing more play as like something in a Weezing Crobat deck or maybe a one of in an Eternatus deck. But I actually just like playing Samurott straight up. Another Radiant Pokemon that made its debut in Astral Radiance was Radiant Heatran. And this one's actually not bad. For one fire and two colorless, does 70 damage times, uh, yeah, 70 damage for each damage counter on this Pokemon. If you've got three damage counters on here, you're doing 210 damage. And if you got even more than that, you can, it has like uncapped damage. I guess there is technically a cap, but it has the potential to one hit KO anything in the game. And getting damage on here wasn't too bad if you paired it up with Magma Basin from Brilliant Stars, and you can get to at least 140 no problem and charge it up. But this one, it didn't really see a lot of play just because fire as a whole was kind of weak at the time. And then another fire po radiant Pokemon showed up that ended up completely eating Heatran's lunch. That being said, I actually think Radiant Heatran is okay. I think this is the last Radiant Pokemon from Astral Radiance. It's Radiant Halucha, where this one just sits on the bench and it has the ability Big Match, where your Pokemon's your Pokemon's attacks do 30 more damage to V Maxes. This didn't really see a lot of play. I mean, it saw a little bit of play later on in decks like Suyin Zorark V Star, where you, you were trying to really raise the ceiling of your damage output. I think the big problem with this card is that V Max cards were already on the way out at this point, so you weren't we weren't really seeing many V Maxes other than like. Mew and Kiram for a little bit 
and and that's kind of it so um radiant halucha it's okay but it just came out at the wrong time and it's only going to become even more irrelevant as time passes one of the most annoying cards of 2022 mill tank its miracle body ability prevents all damage done to this pokemon by attacks from your opponent's pokemon v there have been other pokemon introduced in the sword and shield era that block attacks from pokemon v but none of them were as straightforward as mill tank you just put this onto your bench and then you're done you didn't have to evolve no fuss no muss and mill tank was really disruptive in a number of decks blissey mill tank became an archetype after that a number of decks would just tech in mill tank because why not it was it it forced your opponent to to gust to hit other targets and there were a number of meta decks that literally did not have an answer to mill tank and you would just auto win those matchups so you know max respect to mill tank very annoying card and you kind of had to respect it especially in the world of ptcgo where a number of decks just put this in here as a one of just to try and cheese wins out of other players who just don't have answers for mill tank galley didn't see a lot of play however i'm flagging this one here now because this one might be a factor going forward it's buddy catch ability lets you grab a supporter card from your deck put it into your hand and i think in a world where the entire gardevoir gallade line is going to be a factor in the scarlet and violet era with gardevoir ex being absolutely insane there is a pretty decent chance that this Gallade is going to be incorporated into that mix as well. So be on the lookout for this one going forward. Deancey was a really handy card for decks that needed a little extra setup. It has the ability Princess's Curtain, where as long as this Pokemon's in the active spot, you can't gust with a supporter card. So your opponents can't gust a... a pokemon off the bench with something like boss's orders you would you could still use a scape rope or cross switcher but those are because those are item based but most people are playing stuff like boss or serena and deancey just says nope i'm gonna block the bench and yes it only has 90 hp and gets knocked out really easily but being able to buy an extra turn or two with deancey in the active was oftentimes enough for those setup decks to do what they needed to do Mightyena was hailed as the Mew Killer, and this was a card where its ability Hustle Bark, if your opponent has any Pokemon VMAX in play, this Pokemon's attacks cost three colorless less. And Wild Tackle hitting Mew VMAX for 320 damage for free was absolutely nuts. However, the fact that you had to set up a Poochyena on the bench before you could go into Mightyena made it impractical for most decks. This pretty much only showed up in Zorark box decks as a tech and the Pokemon company would come back and make an even more ridiculous Mew counter because apparently this one wasn't good enough. Moving over to trainer cards, canceling Cologne lets you um, override your opponent's abilities that were in the active. So if you wanted to hit Miltank as a Pokemon V, you would need the canceling Cologne to punch through that. You could gust up Manaphy, then throw down the canceling Cologne and then snipe the bench. Really handy card to have so that these sort of blocking abilities like the Duraludon one the block special energies you kind of have answers for that now canceling cologne isn't used that much however it is a handy card to have and i do play this in certain decks here and there i think my palkia deck does have one and i use it for a very specific instance where i can set up plays where i gust up manaphy i i play the canceling cologne and then i charge up radiant greninja and get the snipe going in there so there are plays that are made possible thanks to canceling cologne and it's a really nice tech to have even if it's not played very much silene is a staple of the mu v max decks as well as a couple of control decks here because it is 
a recovery card. You flip two coins, and for each heads, you get to get a card from your discard and put it on the top of your deck in any order that you want. This was really handy for Mew getting the extra power tablets or the fusion strike energy back, and in control decks, just getting supporter cards or whatever, what other resources you would use to kind of loop your deck forever. I suspect that Silene is going to continue to see play going forward. Gapejaw Bog felt like it was made just for Machamp VMAX to get the damage onto its own bench. However, this ended up becoming a signature card for Hasuian Zorark V-Star one set later. Actually, two sets later. We have to talk about Pokemon Go as well. Uh, but yeah, getting damage onto Pokemon, this ended up being something... Actually, yeah, Samurott technically could use this too. But in any case, this is a card that I think is most synonymous with Hisuian V-Star. Has seen some play here and there, and in very specific cases where decks need it, sure, this is fine. Hisuian Heavy Ball is a personal favorite card of mine. You play this and you can grab a basic Pokemon from your prizes, and if there's none in your prizes, you just discard the card. And there are so many times where a basic Pokemon that I really want is stuck in my prizes, and you can just play Heavy Ball and, and grab it. I think there are valid cases to put one of these in every single deck that you make, I like to have at least one of these in every single deck that I make. However, it's really hard to justify the space depending on the deck, but I do try and squeeze one in almost everything I play. The best supporter out of Astral Radiance and quite possibly the best supporter of 2022, Irida was absolutely insane. You search your deck for a water Pokemon and an item card, reveal them and put them into your hand. And what this lets you do, particularly in the Palkia deck, was you could get your 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 basic Pokemon, you can get your evolution Pokemon, get Palkia V-Star and an item. And what made this card super busted was that you could use the, the water type to grab a Drizzile. Then you get to get even more cards or you could use the item card to grab an Evo Incense or a Level Ball to then evolve to Drizzile or evolve to Inteleon, Shady Dealings and grab even more cards. And Irida became a a draw engine in and of itself. Now, the thing is, going forward, this card actually gets worse because in the Scarlet and Violet era, there will be a core game change, like a rule change, where tool, tool cards are no longer considered items. They are a separate category in and of themselves. So you can't grab stuff like Choice Belt or, or Tool Jammer with a Irida anymore. So this is going to see a little less play, but I think this card is still going to be very good in the future. And it was ridiculously good this time around in 2022. Roxanne is a fascinating card. It, it saw some play here and there, and there are certain decks that prioritize having these in their, their deck over the other. Um, the big the big thing with Roxanne is that when you play it, you can only play it if your opponent has taken at least three prizes. And when you play it, you sh both players shuffle their hands into their decks. You get to draw six cards. They only draw two. And this is one of the few comeback cards in the, so maybe the only comeback card in the entirety of the Sword and Shield era. It is really intriguing to play, but because you can only play it after your opponent has taken three prizes, it becomes situational and it's a dead card for half the game. I generally don't like to play Roxanne unless I am playing a deck where I can cherry pick the Roxanne when I need it. Kind of like a Shady Dealings deck where I can just Shady Deal, grab Roxanne and go. But otherwise, I just don't like ha I don't like seeing this card until I absolutely need it. Temple of Sinnoh was a very disruptive stadium where all special energies get nerfed and only provide colorless energy and have no other effects this would stifle things like arceus v star or turn that double turbo energy into only a single energy aurora energy just becomes colorless energy single strike energy just completely dies <laughs> um this is a, a stadium that lugia v star very much does not want to see and it is seeing some play here and there it will probably cool off 
in the Scarlet and Violet era, at least in the immediate term, as we're losing a ton of special energy and rotation. And the, the use of Temple of Sinnoh will likely go down because of that as well. And last but not least in our look at the Astral Radiance cards is Trekking Shoes. This one is deceptively cool, right? You play this and you look at the top card of your deck. You may put that card into your hand. If you don't, you just discard that card and draw a card. This helps you draw deeper into your deck while also thinning your deck. And there are decks that love playing Trekking Shoes because you get discard synergy here as well. If you're playing the Reggie Gigas deck, you love seeing Trekking Shoes because not only are you digging further into your deck, it's an opportunity to discard energy that Reggie can reattach later. And because of things like that, Trekking Shoes is a really handy card if you can squeeze a couple of them in there. And that concludes our look at Astral Radiance. This is not necessarily the best collector set. It doesn't necessarily have the, the household name Pokemon that collectors are looking for. But from a competitive standpoint, I think this set was great. It introduced a number of strong deck archetypes and some really cool trainer cards that really spiced up the game. But what say you? What did you think of Astral Radiance? Let me know in the comments down below. And that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Before we go, some quick plugs. You can find me on all the things, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram at In Third Person. You can find me over on Twitch at In Third Person. At the time of this recording, I'm still trying to figure out the logistics. I used to always stream Sundays 9 a.m., but because I am now, now a dad with a, a newborn baby, I wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and I don't go to bed till after 8 um, the 9 a.m. stream is really hard. So I'm I'm actively in talks with my wife and we're trying to figure out the logistics. I would love to continue streaming on Sunday morning. It might have to be a little later. Um, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> and last but not least, check out the website in thirdperson.com for more articles and videos on video games, board games, and other nerdy pursuits. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Later.